So it turns out if you take a bunch of sand and put it on a vibrating metal plate that is vibrating at a certain frequency, the sand gathers in these kind of geometric patterns. Either way, uh, I made the same system in geometry notes because I saw Chris on uh, Twitter did the same thing. Uh, so I made kind of like a crude version. Uh, I'm assuming that Chris will make a full tutorial at some point, but for now, uh, something to just whet your appetite. So uh, this is a system that can go to any frequency or really any pattern I can have this go to a spiral, I can have it go to the shape of a bat, uh, whatever. And let's uh, talk about how to do that, because it's actually pretty simple. You think, oh, you have to simulate the vibration. No, it's actually way simpler than that. So go to geometry nodes, take the cube, delete the uh, group input so that our cube is now a geometry nodes object. And people complain that I'm not using, that I am using the default cube. And to them I say, you know what, valid complaint, but uh, I'm here not to satisfy. I'm here to teach you stuff, but also add a bit of irritation. So you're like kind of hate watching, you know, you're like, ah, I can't. Either way, uh, let's make sand. So we need two things. One, we need a sand distributor. So it's sand distributor. And uh, second of all, we need to have it gravitate towards a certain pattern. So starting off with the sand distributor, I'm going to make a grid. This can be our metal plate. Let's have it be two by two. And on that plate, I'm going to have a bunch of sand. So distribute points on faces, like a thousand, if not 10,000. Uh, for each of these, I'm going to make a uh, sand grain. So I want to instance on what, it, what is going on? I just want instance on. I think I keep misspelling it. There we go. I want to instance on points, uh, something to be our sand granule. Now, because we're having uh, so many sand granules, which is a fun word to say, uh, I'm going to use a cube because it's only six faces and it's not as computationally expensive. So I'm just going to make each one 0.01. Even that's a bit big, but for now that's going to do. I'm going to increase the density to 5,000 and let's actually have half the uh, size. Okay, so we have our sand distribution. You can have it be different seeds, uh, whatever you want. Uh, now the question is, how do we have it gravitate towards a certain pattern? Well, uh, speaking of a pattern, let's make one. So I'm going to do, I guess you'd want it to be a mesh uh, if, if you can, since we're going to use geometry proximity. So we're going to draw a circle and then we're going to say, we're going to, what? We're going to say, hey, each sand granule, uh, what is the closest point you are to the shape? And then gravitate towards there at a certain speed, depending on the distance. Um, so I'm going to merge this, uh, or I'm going to join this uh, mesh circle, uh, which you can see if I select it. It's kind of hard to see, but it's right here. Let me decrease the radius. You can kind of see it if YouTube compression doesn't kill this. Here, you can see the circle. Um, I wanted to gravitate towards that. So uh, what I'm going to do is I want to recast the position of these points. So basically each point has an instance. If I set position to the points, it's gonna move the instances. Um, or I guess there is a, a translate instance node. That's another way to think about it. Um, same operation. Although translation is more of an offset technically. Uh, so I'm gonna use a set position. Uh, we want to set the position uh, to the nearest point on the pattern. So I'm going to use geometry proximity, hook this up, connect it to point. So it's going to look for the point on the circle that it's closest to. And we want the position to go to its uh, lo local neighbor, nearest neighbor position. And you can see when we do that, it actually outlines the circle. Now it looks kind of low res because there's only 32 points on the circle. So it has to pick. Uh, I would recommend bumping up that resolution. And we'll, I'll show you a couple tricks to make it look better anyways. So let's go with 300. So now uh, what we have is a system that takes, I'm going to add my position over here so we can mix between them. It takes our sand granules and it goes to the nearest neighbor. Uh, there's no intelligence here. There's no like saying, look at the distance or do this over time or whatever, or any kind of randomness. It's just kind of like a, a thing. And if I wanted to make this thing a triangle, I mean, it would only go to the three points, but you could have it go to a, a triangle or uh, whatever. Maybe a better way to think about this, by the way, is you could, you could do this as a curve and then resample it to select the number of points and then cast it 
uh, to a mesh, since that's what geometry proximity needs. So send this here, here, and this way I'm going to resample with two, or I think we used 300 points last time. This way I can actually have this cast to a triangle or whatever shape, and it will automatically know how to do that. Uh, the main issue is it's kind of going to this like infinitely thin line, and I want there to be a bit of a distribution. So instead of just going to the geometry proximity, let's add a bit of randomness. So it's going to go here with an additional uh, random value. And we want this to only be on the XY plane. So I'm going to reduce this. Maybe we could have it be 0.05 and negative 0.05. So basically, instead of going to a single point, it's going to go within a neighborhood of uh, radius 0.5 uh, there. So you see what I mean? It's almost like we're giving it thickness. And this already makes it look a lot better, like it's actually sand being distributed. Uh, but there's a lot more we can do. Uh, first of all, I want to invert these. So as we go up the factor, it's going to go to the sand. Um, Oh, we've been going for six minutes. Not bad. Uh, I want this to be animated over time. So I'm going to connect this to a seconds input. So now as we play this, it's already animating. And I want this to be something where, like, right now each one, even if they're not equidistant, every sand granule takes the same amount of time. I want this to be proportional uh, to the distance. So I think, and we might change this, I think one thing we could do is we can multiply this by the distance, since we also we know not only the position of the nearest neighbor, but the distance uh, to that nearest neighbor. And this might be wrong, I, I need to think about it. So it seems like this is inverted, <laughs> where the, uh, the uh, furthest points are going the fastest. Uh, maybe what I want to do is I want to send this through, whoops, I want to send this through a map range, or we could do an addition is another way to think about it. Set it to a clamp. Something like that. Uh, by the way, we could add, I know I'm all over the place. I'm actually experimenting at this point in the uh, tutorial. Not uh, sexually, just, you know, seeing what's up. So that, you know, I think multiply actually looked better. So we're going to go with the multiplication. And I want to uh, use a map range. Uh, to maybe invert this. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. So now you can see the uh, furthest granules take the longest time uh, to actually come over. Um, okay, so we're, we're getting something. By the way, for now, let's uh, do something like a hexagon instead so we can actually see a more interesting uh, distribution. Uh, what I want to do is I want to add as much randomness to this as possible so that it doesn't look so like perfectly. I mean, this is a nice pattern and all, um, and that's a cool render in its own right, but it's kind of like too perfect. Um, so anywhere we can add randomness, that's good. So for example, let's add a bit of a delay on this time uh, set to a random value. So let's see what this looks like. As I increase this, or maybe as I decrease this, yeah, now the sand is taking uh, more time on average. So maybe we can go from negative 0.25 to like 2. Although it does seem to be going a bit, like the design is already kind of done from the get-go. So I'm going to add a uh, initial subtraction to uh, have the time uh, start off not uh, completed. Okay, so that looks uh, decent. <laughs> Uh, if anything, I'm going to multiply. I know I keep changing things, but that, that's how it is. I'm going to make time twice as fast, or maybe even three times as fast. So that looks pretty good, actually. Uh, maybe one other thing we can do is we could have it so that not every sand granule goes here, because what if a sand granule is like too far away? So we could have some of them lingering, maybe. Uh, so maybe we could say, only do this thing if, and we're going to make a condition, if the distance, the distance, and this is how I make node networks, by the way, I kind of build up on like, what is this missing? What could be added? Um, maybe we say only do this if the distance is less than some threshold, and we multiply this as like a zero, one Boolean. So now you can see 
it's doing it, but these points in the middle that aren't close enough uh, don't make the cut. And this is also something we can randomize. So anytime we have a chance to randomize, uh, and I'm using a different seed, that's a good thing. Uh, so let's say the threshold is, I mean, we could do it zero to one random. That way there's some sand left over. Maybe I want to influence it a bit, something like that. So it doesn't look like perfectly, you know, I think that looks actually pretty realistic, actually. Um, and there's a bit too much of a delay in the beginning. So let's do something like that. Perfect. And uh, some other things we can do is we could do a, maybe we could influence kind of the curve of this, of like, or maybe we could use a smoother step. So let's see what that looks like. So you can see that actually looks a bit different than the uh, linear. The linear is kind of, you know, it's, linear. Uh, the smoother step has a bit of a, it goes faster as it gets closer kind of deal. And you can see there's some like leftover grains of sand that do the thing. Oh, let me get, okay. So I got a notification and which messed up the recording. Hopefully I can continue from where I left off. Um, what I was saying is that this uh, smoother step actually has a kind of nice exponential kind of, as it gets closer, it goes faster kind of thing. And we have some like loose granules again, uh, how can I add some randomness is a good question. Well, all these sand granules are the same size. So let's try, um, not with that, but with another random uh, value node with uniform scale set to a seed of two, so new seed. Uh, let's try connecting this to the scale. And we can have the smallest sand granule be half the size and the biggest one be 50% bigger. <laughs> not 11 times bigger, but 50% bigger. So that adds another source of randomness. And I think that actually looks pretty good. I think the only thing this thing is missing is that it's not like vibrating up and down. And uh, that's something we can add pretty uh, easily because uh, our offset lets us literally go up and down, right? So we can uh, do a function of the uh, Z coordinate, which is the one that goes up and down. Uh, we could have this be kind of the sine, sine or cosine something periodic of the time function. So this could go here. This is going to look uh, kind of ridiculous. <laughs> uh, so let's make the uh, amplitude much smaller, maybe like a hundredth of the size. So now you can see it's going up and down, but very gradually. And let's make that way faster. So we multiply it by like a hundred. So now it looks like a vibrating plate. If anything, make it even faster. 400 times and then like a third of the amplitude. That looks pretty good. So it looks like a vibrating plate that's uh, moving the uh, sand granules. Um, again, if I can add a source of randomness, I will add a source of randomness. So we can add kind of like an offset to this. Um, and that can be another random value uh, set to a new seed with a maximum uh, period of two pi. So they should all be vibrating slightly differently. I think that looks pretty good, honestly. I think kind of the last thing to do to get this to kind of render quality is uh, maybe let's increase this three times the amount of sand granules and let's make the average size of them smaller. Which is going to take longer to compute, but whatever. Um, so at this point, I just want to emphasize we can do any pattern here. Uh, you could even combine patterns. So you could do something like this plus a square join them. So now they're going to like a triangle uh, and a square. Um, and you could have, the, you could even do some weird stuff that technically doesn't make sense. Like you could have this rotate over time. So let's see, now the sand granules are converging to a rotating pattern. Uh, that's something you can do. Um, and I think that's kind of the point of it um, really. So hopefully I can edit this tutorial with that cut in the middle. Either way, hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, Chris, make a, a full tutorial on this. This is just a example of what's possible. Um, if anything, I'd also randomize the randomization so it's not like this perfect square, but I'll leave that to Chris. Uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial, a uh, link to the Patreon in the description where you can get access to this blend file uh, so you don't need to make it yourself. Uh, early access to tutorials, you could have seen this early, and uh, exclusive tutorials. Uh, or did I say early access already? I don't know. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. And again, Patreon is the best way to support what I do.